So, hello folks. Um, my name is Neil Gampa, and I'm here to talk to you about DNF5. Four? Open SUSE, maybe. So, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm not going to read everything on it, but I've been doing open source for a very long time. I've been doing lots of stuff uh, with Linux uh, for about as long. Um, contributor in a lot of the uh, software management stuff in both the Red Hat and, open SU and the SUSE ecosystems. And as a result of all that, I have accumulated a long list of community titles doing a lot of different things. Uh, so we're going to start with talking about DNF and DNF5. First, a little bit of a review. DNF Package Manager. It's a successor to the Yellow Dog Updater, which was released eons ago, doesn't exist anymore. Pretend, it, pretend it's gone. It, it was forked from Yum so that we could use LibSolve, which Yal and OpenSUSE created, and also to offer a useful API and a plugin architecture because we'd never had that before. Uh, and it turns out people like actually being able to build in stuff on top to make their lives easier. I, who knew? Like, I, I, I certainly didn't guess that. Um, it's used in a number of Linux distributions, Fedora, Magia, uh, as well as uh, RHEL and CentOS and so on. And it's been available in OpenSUSE since Leap 15.0, courtesy of yours truly. Um, if you want to learn more details or whatever and have a more in-depth comparison of DNF versus Zipper, you can check out my talk from OpenSUSE Conference 2019, where I go into this with much more detail. So we've talked a little bit about DNF. So now DNF 5, what makes this different? So the big thing about DNF version 5 is that they move the code base from a mixture of C, C++, Python, and God knows what, to just C++ for the internal architecture. Um, everything is now actually unified across two core libraries. The uh, core functionality is part of the libdnf5 library, and then there's a CLI front-end library that wraps around libsmart calls and like tries to make it easy to have a consistent terminal interface with the libdnf5 CLI library. The, the real cool thing about this rewrite into C++ is actually that we now have first-class API binding support for a number of programming languages, and adding more is relatively straightforward. Out of the gate, we, of course, have C and C++ bindings, but we also have Python, Perl, and Ruby bindings through the usage of SWIG. Technically, I think we also have Go bindings, but they also don't work when I try to use them, so... But if somebody's interested in Go and wants to do weird package management things through Go, Technically, it's possible. Somebody might want it. Um, there's also a, a new thing around having a custom Dbus-based client server model, you know, a service-oriented method of interacting with the package management system with DNF5 daemon. This is actually inspired a little bit by the custom DNF daemon that was written for the GUI front end that I talked about in my previous talk back in 2019 called DNF Dragora. Uh, and bringing this into the DNF project and making it a core part of DNF makes it a lot easier for it to maintain and for people to build um, more interesting front ends with the complete access to the DNF API rather than me and a couple of others having to hodgepodge and figure out ways to, you know, glue these, cra crazy glue these things together. So it's actually architected to handle this properly. As of right now, uh, DNF5 in Fedora has replaced microDNF, which was an alternate uh, C implementation of DNF for containery based things. And with the upcoming Fedora Linux 39 release, uh, it's going to replace the current DNF as well, which is also known as DNF version 4. And with any luck, it'll be an OpenSUSE tumbleweed real soon now. I've been spending uh, several weeks actually beating the crap out of it to make it all like work. Uh, but to kind of show the results of me beating the crap out of it, uh, let's see if I can actually not be terrible. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to put this over here for a second because I can't operate a computer and hold the microphone at the same time. And I also can't type. 
Did that come up? There we go. So I've got this Tumbleweed instance up. It actually has DNF and DNF5 installed. So I can do sudo DNF in, or sudo DNF up. Actually, I'm going to do assume no, because I actually don't want it to do anything, and I just want it to show up. We're going to. And increase the font size, sure, sure, sure. How's that? Is that better? All right. And that means I should do it on the other side, too. All right, so here we have this. It's been pre-set up, actually. I configured this to use the same repo configs that I have for Zipper, because that was easy, and I was working on it this morning. And so I did all the simple stuff. You see it shows this upgrade, and it shows all the things. It's got colorful output. If, you're ever, if you've ever seen DNF before, that looks very familiar to you. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, assume no. If I can type. And the output is similar, but not exactly the same. I'm not entirely certain why it's saying replacing for everything it's upgrading, but there you go. I guess it treats everything like obsoletes now. Um, but you can see the output's very similar, but it's also somewhat closer to what it looks like on Zipper as well, where it bolds the, the version bumps in the detailed view and shows the, the colors and the font renderings pretty similarly to how it does it with Zipper. Um, but there's also a third mode that is new to this. And wow, now that looks real tiny. And then we're going to use DNF5 in Tmux. And because I'm a terrible person, we're going to do some package management stuff live. We're going to install some pa a package. I'm going to use it to do even more terrible by splitting it even further. L dot F. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you something different. So I'm going to use the DNF5 daemon. As I mentioned earlier, with DNF5, we now have a client server service model available that you can optionally use. Well, there's an example client included uh, called DNF5 daemon client, as very obviously named. Uh, and we can try to install or remove stuff or whatever. So in this case, I'm going to try to install Emacs, because I actually like Emacs. Screw you all, Vim people. So here it shows you know, the same kind of prompt as before. But then if you look here, it's actually, uh, well, there we go. It, is, it shows that the, the DNF5 daemon server was running in the background, um, actually handling the transaction request, um, going through the repos, queuing everything up, um, and, and showing debug output. So then if I go here and set yes, I'd really like to know why Emacs needs a Linux glibc devil, but that's a whole separate question. So now it's installing over here. And if I go here, and you can see it's, it's doing callbacks. You can see the transactions being run, the hooks. Um, logs from RPM and DNF daemon are showing up in real time in the syslog, or in the journal, rather. You can see the callbacks to all the plugins. Oh, right, and this VM is running with SE Linux because I, you know, I prefer SE Linux over AppArmor. Fight me. Um, and so now I have Emacs installed. And so if I do Emacs. Uh, there you go. And uh, X. There we go. And I made something crash on purpose, and so you can see that the journal is actually real. Or more that I pressed the wrong button combinations. Kill the pains. So that's DNF5 daemon. Um, let's see. Let's, let's just do an upgrade here. Instead of doing assume no, we're just going to let it do it. Um, note that I'm using the shorthands up and whatever. So while that's installing here, it downloads all the packages in parallel. It downloads all the metadata in parallel, which is actually new. DNF4 doesn't do that. 
It'll download metadata um, serially and packages in parallel, but now it downloads everything in parallel. So DNF5 help. And you can see here we have actually a, you know, compatibility aliases for all the major, the mainline subcommands that you might be used to using in Zipper because I added them to DNF years ago and so now they're, we're, we're stuck with it and I'm okay with this. Um, but you have all the main subcommands, queries and stuff like that. Um, upcoming versions of that are adding more and more of the subcommands back in from DNF4 and yeah. Uh, I don't think there's actually too much more special. Oh, well, now it's actually running the verify step. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the whole thing. Although, noticeably, DNF5 is way more verbose than I think is even considered reasonable. But, you know, whatever. Well, anyway, that's just doing stuff. And there's not really much point to me showing that even more since it's basically not going to change. So that's DNF5. And so from the perspective of what that is for OpenSUSE, the next step for including it in, in factory, there's a single unit test that's failing that is bugging the crap out of me. I have talked to the DNF team folks about it. We're probably we're going to try debugging to fix it. The other thing, ironically, is the Ruby bindings aren't building. They build fine on Fedora. And I have no idea why they don't build on OpenSUSE. <laughs> but uh, I filed a bug for that, and I hope I could get that fixed because it would be very ironic if the distribution that uses Ruby for lots of Ruby tooling, for lots of tooling, can't use Ruby bindings for their package manager. Um, after including into a factory, um, the next thing on my, on my to do list is to port over the snapper and the transactional update plugins I wrote for DNF4. Uh, well, the transactional update plugin I wrote for DNF4. Igor Natenko, who was here at OSC19, actually wrote the Snapper plugin for DNF4 long ago. So getting those ported to DNF5 and then working on the package kit plugin uh, to replace DNF4 with DNF5 there. Um, one of the nice things about getting all this done in the new architecture is, for example, we can have shared caches, shared, uh, shared requests, the locking mechanisms between con concurrent accessors is actually all worked out. So it's not stupid to have multiple accesses of the same system at once. And DNF5 is way more friendly for um, immutable distributions running with read-only root file systems because the persistent state data, the system state data, and the transaction logs are now all split up into different databases that are stored in different locations. Stuff that makes sense to be part of the system state is now in user whereas the temporal state stuff is in var, and so it's a lot easier to integrate into a read-only type system as well. So, questions? Wasn't a super long talk, but, you know, I only had eight slides. <laughs> oh, no, he's running with the microphone. You ain't escaping the mic. <laughs> so, oh. Regarding the last slide, I had the impression that with DNF5 and DNF daemon, uh, we don't need package kit anymore. So the problem with, with that is that nobody wants to write a front end for DNF5 daemon except for the cockpit people. And because of that, package kit's going to stick around for anybody that has a multi-distro um, front end to managing software. So that includes GNOME software, that includes Plasma Discover, many of the other tools that are written in the, in the ecosystem, they're all gonna stick around with the package kit API. And the whole reason that nobody want, that the, the DNF team doesn't want to write the plugin for package kit has interesting historical stuff that isn't really important anymore uh, because I'm a co-maintainer for package kit and I'll just, I'll just write it and merge it in. Um, but uh, uh, the package kit's going to be necessary for the foreseeable future. We're, I don't expect it to, to really ever go away. One of the big problems in the past was that package kit just had so many unmaintained backends that it made it really hard to continue developing it. One of the things that we did for package kit 1.2 was we deleted half of the backends, like just straight up. Anything that hadn't received a commit in five years got deleted. So do I understand correctly that with DNF daemon, we make package kit 
smaller, but it still stays uh, in, in is the interface. So DNF daemon exists for a very specific purpose. If you want to be able to have a service-oriented way to access and manipulate an operating system environment that is not the running environment, then DNF daemon is pretty much the only way to do it because it knows how to handle cheroots, re relocated environments, stuff like that. Package Kit doesn't know how to do that, and it is very intentionally designed to not know that because it is intended to, for running environments, for the host system. Only crazy people try to run Package Kit to build operating system images or run installation processes right off of Package Kit. Uh, nobody else should ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I guess not. Well, that's it for me. It wasn't that long. <laughs>